Today I'm in Heartland, North Devon, a beautiful part of the British Isles to investigate three supposedly haunted sites. There are tales of ghostly monks gliding silently throughout the landscape, a legend surrounding the beheading of a saint, and two ghostly forms of ladies seen walking over an old bridge. Join me as I uncover the hauntings of Heartland. Born in 468 AD, St Necton was the eldest son of King Brychan and grew up alongside his 24 brothers and 24 sisters in Wales before setting sail for Heartland Point in Devon, where, after hearing tales of St Anthony in the Egyptian desert, decided to become a hermit, living out his life in a hut within a stoke woodland, only to be accompanied once a year by his brothers and sisters who would visit him after the winter solstice. One day in 510 AD, a swineherd was wandering through the forest, looking for his master's best breeding pigs, where he came upon St Nectan's hut and asked the hermit if he'd seen the pigs. Nectan was able to show the swineherd where they were, and so he was rewarded with two cows. On the 17th of June that year, two passing robbers stole the cattle that had been gifted to Nectan. The saint was able to track the thieves through the forest until he caught up with them. However, in an altercation, the saint was beheaded. Legend says how Nectan picked up his head and carried it back to his home. On the way, however, he became weary and sat down, laying his head on a nearby rock by a well, where he collapsed. It's said that red streaks of blood can still be seen to this day at St Nectan's well in Stoke, which is situated in a hidden wooded area off the main road of the village. Now the well where St Nectan placed his severed head actually has some legends attached to it. The story goes that many many hundreds of years ago the Lord of the Manor requested he was bought some water from this very well and the servant came down and collected some water in a vessel and brought it back to the manor where she began to boil it. For some unknown reason the water was impossible to boil, it didn't matter how much fuel they put on the fire, the water wouldn't boil at all. And the Lord heard of this and requested that the, the servant girl look inside the vessel which she did and was astounded to see a live eel wriggling around at the bottom of the pot. The eel was actually brought back to the well and set free, and after that the water was actually able to be boiled. Now this is of course a very very strange and bizarre story. You often see with a lot of folklore and, and even legends, there's, they're based on some kind of fact or there's some kind of philosophical or, uh, or, or metaphorical meaning behind them. However, I can't really see where this story may have originated from. Maybe it is based on some essence of facts from many years ago and it's changed over the years. But either way, it, it obviously adds to, to sort of the mysterious and strange legends around this landscape. And that brings me on to another supposed story surrounding the well. Now it's said that there is a spirit or an entity that is somewhat of a guardian around this well. Now I'm unable to find many sources to back this up, it just seems to be sort of local talk and local folklore. But the well is believed to have been built on a Celtic monastery from around the 4th century. And if it's that old, you know, it, it's possible that being a religious site uh, but it, and just a, the actual age of the place itself, could it be that an energy or a guardian is still lurking here to this very day? Situated near the well is a church dedicated to St Nectan, which due to its enormous size is often referred to as the Cathedral of North Devon. The original construction began in the year 1170, with a distinctive 128 foot high tower being erected in 1420, a landmark which has helped sailors navigate the rocky shoreline for hundreds of years. It's said that a former reverend once witnessed a monk dressed in a black habit walk around the church in churchyard. This story also ties in with the legend of a band of ghostly monks making their way in silent procession from the church to the site of the former abbey. Half a mile away from the church on the approach to Heartland Abbey is Bow Bridge, which dates to at least 1605 but is likely to be much older, with thousands of people crossing it over the centuries on their way to the abbey. For at least the last 90 years there's been a number of strange events witnessed on this bridge. Many people claim to have seen strange ghostly lights floating around, but on closer inspection they appear to morph into what seems like two women dressed in silken gowns with their heads missing. Now it's impossible to tell who these spirits may have been. Um, it's, it's well known that St Nectan actually had 24 brothers and sisters and there's a bit of speculation that these could be the ghosts of two of his sisters. 
However, that is merely just speculation. But what I find most interesting is that there's a river that runs under this bridge. And in many, many different cultures and countries, there's been a strong link between the paranormal and flowing water. And it's said that ghosts cannot cross flowing water. And I wonder if that could tie into the stories of the hauntings on this bridge. Maybe what is it, whatever's on the bridge is unable to cross one way or the other due to the flowing water which runs below. So I've just arrived for my investigation of St Nixon's Church. As I said earlier, I'm performing this investigation completely alone. Um, unfortunately, it's been very, very bad weather today. It's been incredibly rainy and we're due a storm tonight as well. So I'm not going to be setting up any locked off cameras just because I don't want to risk them getting wet. And it's going to be very difficult for me to pack them all away on my own if it does start to rain. Um, so instead I've got obviously my main camera here, got my body cam and I'm also recording on uh, the trail cam over there as well. So hopefully we might be able to pick up something on any of these cameras um, And yeah, I'm going to kick off with the investigation now I don't really know where to focus on in the churchyard because obviously there's been sightings of these monks But there's not any indication as to whereabouts in the church the churchyard they are and I was unable to find the the route that they follow over to the Abbey there are certain pathways you can use to get there, but I wonder if houses have been built over the original pathway I'm not entirely sure but I'm going to focus most of the investigation here in the churchyard itself because there definitely has been sightings here. So I'm just going to start, get a base reading on the millimetre. Currently reading a 0, 0.0. As with most churchyards, well, most churches nowadays, they do have power to them, um, which could affect EMF, but. The only way we'll know that is to walk around and just get a base level reading. I was visiting this churchyard not that long ago and I've come back tonight to see if there is anybody here that would like to talk to me or communicate with me. I mean you no harm, I come here with complete respect to those interred here or anybody that may still reside in this churchyard, I don't mean you any offence in being here. I would just like to try and talk to you, communicate with you, learn about who you are. I've heard that some people have seen monks in this churchyard walking through. Maybe from the time of the abbey or when this church was first constructed. I think it would be fascinating if I could talk to any of you. But likewise, I know that there are hundreds and hundreds of people that have used this church for worship over the years. That probably this church and this churchyard were very, very important parts of your life. And I'd love to talk to you just as much. Try and learn your story. Because each one of these gravestones has a story behind it. Each one of these represents a person, represents one of you. And that's what I do, I come out and try and learn about what these stories are. What were your dreams, your hopes, your aspirations? What did you love? What did you hate in life? First impressions after my little introduction, 
not really feeling anything here. Uh, to be honest, considering I'm on my own, I feel perfectly comfortable being here. I don't feel like there's a heavy atmosphere or, or anything like that. Which um, doesn't mean that there's, there's nothing going on here, it just means that I'm personally not picking up on anything. Just have to push forwards. I'm holding a device here in my hand. Could you come towards this please? Could you reach out and touch it? If there is anybody here, please don't fear me. Come towards my voice, come towards me. As I mentioned earlier, I, I mean you no know offence and no harm. I'm just here to talk to you. Despite my best efforts, I was unable to document any paranormal activity within the churchyard, so I moved on to the second location of the night, St Nicton's Well. So I've just set the millimetre up in there on the little little shelf. Um, I've got the REM pod feature turned on as well. Currently reading a 0, 0.0, which uh, it should stay as the whole time I'm here, no reason for that to change, and there's obviously nothing around the antenna, um, so there's no reason that that should go off either. Hello, my name's Luke. I've come here tonight to visit this well. The well of St. Nicton. I've heard a lot of stories about this place. And I've heard that there's somebody here who guards this area. Someone who watches over the well. I'm sure to make sure that no harm comes of it. Is there anybody here with me tonight? I placed on the shelf there a little contraption. Are you able to move around that please? There's the sound of something falling off the tree. Like I said, we've had some pretty heavy rainfall, so I'm expecting the sound of dripping and you know debris falling from the trees. So I've just got to be wary of that. I hope you don't mind me being here. And I know it may be strange that someone is talking out loud to you. I don't know how many people visit this place, I wouldn't have thought many. It's not that easy to find. But I, I've come here to talk to you, learn about who you are. And see if the stories are true, see if there is somebody guarding this well. Or protecting it maybe, just watching over. To be honest, it is a bit creepy around here. Um, I don't really feel like there's a, an energy or a charge here, but I, it, it feels creepy, and I, I wonder if that might be just the location of it. I mean, it is literally just a well on this tiny little platform here, um, <clears throat> and then there's a little stream that runs down the hill, and obviously the way in and out is, is down a, a, a large slope that's um, really slippery. So I don't know if it's just the the feeling of kind of being trapped in this area in the dark or whether is, there's anything to that feeling I don't know but um, I'm certainly not feeling anything solid at the moment that I would say is something I'd feel in the presence of a spirit
What happens if I shut these doors? Or do you prefer them open? Just noticed there's um, there's a shell, like a clam shell or an oyster shell there, and there's um, a coin there, and there's these little bits of string that have been tied to the railing. So I wonder if this is maybe people visiting here that have kind of given offerings. I've seen that at certain places before, like um, certainly places similar to this. You know, people leave offerings in in hopes of good luck or something along those lines. But I reckon that's what these are. Hello? Ah. Might have been the Daddy Longlegs. <laughs> yes. Oh well, at least we know it works. So, I've been here for about an hour now. Um, and I've had nothing happen whatsoever. Um, not even like a, a change in the atmosphere or, or anything like that um, which I mean to be honest out of the three places I was hoping this might be the surprising one you know I thought because it is really out the way um, it's a bit unusual you know just a well and an area surrounding it um, I thought this might be the place that would give us activity but it's, it's certainly not proving to be the case at the moment um, I'll probably give it another 20 minutes or so and uh, I'll, I'll head off over to the bridge but um, yeah really quiet night so far. I remained at the well for a while longer but other than the false alarm on the mail meter the area remained silent and still so I decided to move on to the third and final location for the night, Bow Bridge. Is there anybody on this bridge with me? I've heard that there's uh, two ladies that like to walk along this bridge. My name's Luke, don't need to be afraid of me at all. I've just come here to talk and to try and find out who you are. Is there any kind of sign you could give me that you're here? Okay, it's the first thing I noticed being here is obviously there's been reports of lights being seen and if there is one thing that I've noticed that this place is dark, you know, I thought the uh, I thought the well was dark, but this is on another level. You can't see anything at all here. There is no artificial light from anywhere, and that's because there's no houses nearby either. Um, 
Now there is a road that runs, you won't be able to see it on camera, but there's a road that runs up there. Um, not a particularly busy road, but that is the only place that I would imagine lights would come from. But if there is anybody here, you know, I'm, I'm pretty, you'd hear the sound of the car because it's, the road's not too far away. You'd hear the sound of the car and you'd work out that where the lights are from. Here we are, got a car coming now. So yeah, you can see you can see lights easily. Um, but again, back into pitch black, and once the car's gone around that corner, again, if lights have been seen on the bridge, then they're they're not from car headlights. I mean, these reports have been going back to the 1930s at the very least. You know, they may have gone back further. So there wouldn't have been heavy traffic back then. Again, there is a footpath, public footpath, that runs up that way. Um, so it could be torchlights being seen, but very much doubt that again because it's a fair way off from the bridge itself, and the reports come from this bridge. Don't know why I feel really on edge on this bridge for some reason, and the the sound of the water is playing tricks on my ears. I keep thinking I'm hearing voices. But I think that is just down to the river running below. I do feel a little bit on edge here. I'm holding this little box in my left hand. Could you come over and touch it please? So I mean you know a fence by being here. I'd just like to know who you are. The year now is 2021. Are you stuck on this bridge? Yeah, I definitely feel like, out of the three places, this is certainly the most ominous. Again, I don't know if it's the setting of it, or if there's something here, but it certainly feels weird. Is there someone around me at the moment? It's obviously impossible to do any kind of... Uh, audio experiments, EVP recordings, or expected to pick up voices on camera um, simply because it's so loud with the water rushing underneath. So I'm going to get out the full spectrum camera and snap some photos and see if, see if anything comes up. I spent the next 20 minutes taking photos on and around the bridge with the full spectrum still camera but was unable to capture any anomalies. Although surprisingly the most atmospheric of the three locations, nothing out of the ordinary occurred throughout the remainder of the investigation and approximately an hour later I was forced to head off due to increasingly bad weather. Despite not encountering any of the phantoms that are said to roam the North Devon landscape, it certainly didn't detract from the rather unusual and fascinating stories that relay to these antiquated sites. With its beautiful scenery and mysterious landmarks, there is no wonder that Heartland still remains a place steeped in folklore and ghost stories, and I hope these traditions continue for generations to come. <laughs>